Hey guys, it's your game here again. Isn't it what if Luffy was a swordsman? Sorry, I've lived in too long, it's just writer's block and I keep getting headaches. But, um, yeah, someone commented this in one of the videos and I didn't see, I didn't, I saw, I forgot who commented on which video. I'll go and find you and put your name in the comments. So, um, or if you see this, you can comment that it was you that, that, wrote, the, that wrote the comment. But, um, one thing, this what is, there's gonna be no double fruit, like, there's no, there's no, there's gonna be no gum, no gum, 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 me. The is not gonna have that double fruit. He's going to get two swords from Shanks and the straw hat. Now, one of the swords is going to be a wakizashi, which is like a, like a small sword. It's not like, it's bigger than the kitchen knife, but it's like pretty small for a sword. That's, that's what I'm saying. And, let me hold it up, yeah. So, these are the, these are the ranks of swords. The top row, I'm not showing these because it's like, it's like, um, well, Yordu is Mihawk's blade, like the giant black blade. Muda Komogiri is White Beard's Nakanada. Shodai Katetsu, I believe, is Mwana right now. And we have the Great Grade, which is like every one of the Zoro swords is a Great Grade. Sorry, I'm surprised Enma isn't a, like, isn't like a Supreme Grade. And Ame no Habakiri. But, Wado Ichimonji, Zoro's, Shusui, Ryuma, and Zoro's. And Nidai Katetsu, I believe that's in, I believe, I believe that's in someone else's pool. I'm pretty sure Nidai is in Wano as well. Enma is in the possession of Zoro right now. I mean, Abakiri, I believe, is possessed by, by Momonosuke right now. Kashu, I forgot who sword that was, but uh, it doesn't matter right now. Yubashiri was used to be Zoro's, but it broke, I'm pretty sure. You have Sandai. I'm pretty sure that was also, like, the sword that, sword that Zoro used to have. But, probably not. Then we have Shigure, which is Tashigi's sword. So, uh, yeah. So, the, the Wakazashi Luffy's gonna get is going to be a skillful grade sword. And then, the, the regular sized sword is going to be a great grade. As you know, the, the Wakazashi is going to be a graded sword. The regular sized sword is going to be a skillful grade. Luffy's gonna upgrade it to a great grade, then a supreme grade. So, yeah, back to Luffy. Now, we're going to go to Luffy. His childhood goes to the exact same. It's just he has a sword with him the whole time. And he's a lot more calm. Like he figured out through training his, with his sword. Excuse me. That he had, had more that he had to have more patience in him. So Luffy was was more calmed down as a kid. Even he still brought in a lot of a lot of food. So his childhood went the exact same. It's just he also has a small bit of observation hockey. You no, know, it's not like on a post on a post time skip Luffy. It's like pre time skip Kobe right now. He can hear he can hear farther and he can see farther, and yeah, that kind of stuff. And he, can, and he has like like slight control over the voice of all things. He has slight control over that as well. So he's supposed to shout is the exact same. We don't need to go over any of it. It's just he has a sword and no devil fruit. And he's pretty, he's pretty skilled with a pipe. But Sabo still dies. The Luffy still pissed off about everything. So yeah, but we're gonna go to Luffy setting sail. When he sets sail, he still has like the small rowing boat. But this time, when the Sea King tries to bite the ship in half. Luffy will draw the Wakizashi instead of the giant blade. Like, he hears the Wakizashi on his back. Like, well, not on his back. Like, you know how, like, in some shows or anime, there's, like, like, a, like a sword, like, something to hold the sword on the back, or at least on the lower back region? That's, Luffy, that's what Luffy has a Wakizashi in. And he has the main blade, kind of, like, on, like, kind of, like, carry on, on, like, going going sideways on his back. He has it like that. But Luffy will draw the Wakizashi as he's a Sea King, like, well, the, well, the Lord of the Coast. He doesn't even want to talk to Luffy or anything. Like, he's not saying any words. He just says, I'm going to eat you. He jumps up and will slash the air. And it makes a giant, just, like, horizontal slash across the Sea King's chest if it, if it was a human. But once the slash is there, it just falls back in the water. He will land back on the boat. Everyone just sees how strong Luffy's gotten. Luffy finishes setting sail. And we're going to go to him on Alvita's boat. Luffy's on Alvita's boat. He, has a, he breaks out. This time, he reaches, like, well, he still punches his way out. When he punches someone, the punch is a little bit stronger. The person gets, gets sent flying off the boat. And Alvita saw, like, the, this person get, gets sent flying. So she sends some guys down. As Luffy will use his Wakizashi and slash down the other two guys. It looks like Kobe. Kobe's, like, you know, nervous about what to do. But Luffy just sees he's not a threat. Luffy, Luffy then says, don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you. You don't, you, don't, you don't seem like a threat. Plus, if you were, you'd be pretty damn weak. One group of guys come down as Luffy, just keep using the Wakizashi and slashing down a lot of the guys. 
Luffy does have uh, does have like decent use of his sword. Or like a like, like a regular size one. I'm sorry about this real quick. Lift this up. I've got some light in my room. So Luffy uses his Wakazashi slash and a lot of Alvita's crew. Even Alvi Alvita herself. She jumps at Luffy and Kobe, but no station, Luffy will, will chop up her club. And he kicks Alvita in the chest and you're flying. No, actually, I'd say he's not the same length as he does in canon, with, but he's a lot stronger physically. So yeah, Kobe and Luffy still set sail, and they go to Shelltown. We get to Shelltown, and Luffy will walk into a cafe with Helmeppo. Well, not with Helmeppo. Like, Helmeppo was in the cafe, it's just he didn't go in there with him. So Luffy and Kobe are on the in the cafe, and they're talking a bit. Helmeppo then says, as you know, oh, Pirate Hunter Zoro is, ex is, ex is supposed to be executed today. And he's like, mm, Pirate Hunter Zoro, he seems familiar. When the little girl starts like crying, so if you ask her, you know, what happened to Zoro, or what happened, oh, what happened to Zoro, or why is he being executed? She explains what Helmet was telling everyone, and then she explains what actually happened. She even says, oh, the Marines here are corrupt. That's when one of the, one of the people, the people in there says, no, not the, not all the Marines, it's Captain Morgan and his dumb son. The other says, the blonde haired brat and the captain of this island. And then they explain, you know, what what Morgan looks like. Fion says, uh, I might just kidnap kidnap Blondie just because he's he needs to learn some respect. They they might kidnap him about they actually they actually like we'll we'll let you take him. The way actually then says, Kobe, I think I think this is a learning experience for you. Some Marines you'll meet in life in life are gonna be corrupt or they're going to be idiots. Will they be corrupt or or idiots or they'll be decent humans. My grandpa was a decent human, and he's still a marine, a strong one at that. So he actually asked Luffy's Luffy's name, then his grandpa's full name, because he's like, you know, you might, I might know him. Luffy then says, "My name is Monkey D. Luffy." Kobe then says, "A marine with Monkey D. Garpo God." It looks like Luffy saying, "Wait, well, you're a pirate, but your grandpa's a marine. You're not sure about fighting him." Luffy then says, "By the time I catch my grandpa, I'd be strong enough to take him on. I know it. Even though the next time he doesn't know would be in a few months." Kobe then just says. Well, if I become a Marine, I have to, I have to fight you Luffy, too, Luffy. Luffy then says, Kobe, you'll never surpass me. Just know that in your life. You will never, ever surpass me. Ever. Ever. He says, Kobe, dead in the eye. Kobe says, I don't, I don't know if that's you saying you're strong or me, or you saying I'm too weak. Luffy says, take it as both. But, uh, Kobe, why don't you join my crew for a bit? Kobe says, but I want to become a pirate. No, I don't, I don't, no, I don't, no, I want to, he says, I don't want to become a pirate. He then says, all right, Kobe, if these Marines don't let Morgan and Hobo be beaten, you can see that all these Marines are cowards, or idiots, as he walks over to the girl to go feed Zoro. And Hobo still pulls up, trying to, like, like stomp on the little girl's food. Luffy puts the wakazashi to his neck, saying, saying you guys are idiots. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna name this horse real quick. Alright, so the Wakazashi is going is going to be named Sino, and the regular size sword is going to be named Yusen. So Sino is like part of a sentence that's like this like gifted blade or gifted sword. And Yusen is like preferred blade. Yusen is the larger blade, Sino is the Wakazashi. But He's only using Wakazashi because he might go overboard and actually kill, cut someone in half if he uses his, um, if he uses Yusen. So, Luffy will start, start, like, just, like, just, like, threatening, threatening Helipo with the blade. And he actually tells, like, Luffy then says, tell two of your marines to go release Zoro. And have some more, grab, grab his swords. Helipo will do so as they all run inside, grab Zoro's swords. And they, they release him. Zoro then, Zoro then sees Luffy carries two swords. And he sees the larger one hasn't been unsheathed in a while. He takes this as Luffy isn't skilled in it, or Luffy hasn't found a worthy opponent. So, he's like, if it's, he hasn't found a worthy opponent, he must be strong. He, he, must, be the, he must be my level, or a little stronger. Now, if you guys are wondering what the, what the comparison is, Luffy is slightly stronger than stronger than you know. I would say slightly weaker, but observation hockey gives him an edge. So, with with his observation hockey, he can he can like beat Zoro. 
But Zoro only has a Luffy physically. Like, that's really it. Like, Zoro physically, is physically stronger than Luffy. I'm gonna, I'll give him that. But, you know, I'd, I'd say Zoro's faster. That's it. Luffy's observation hockey can help him keep up. <laughs> so, yeah. Now, the range, like, Kobe. Kobe was, like, watching Luffy. Luffy, like, moves the blades, moves the blades away. And Luffy puts, a, puts, um, side, puts Sino away, as he then says. I wasn't actually gonna, gonna kill you. But that does prove how how we will you how weak willed you are. And Bolin says, "Fire at him." Luffy then says, "Hmm, this might work." As he draws you send, and will start slicing apart bullets. No hesitation. He'll use observation hockey to perceive all the bullets as he slashes them apart or blocks them. Once all the bullets are slashed apart, and and I guess not. Once all once all, everyone has to reload again, and Luffy like, he expects Luffy to fall down dead. Luffy holds out you send as Yusen has like some like some like. Like a bruise or two on it, not a bruise, but like there's like a, a mark where the bullets hit. You can tell the bullets hit hit that spot. Humbo's like, "What the hell? Why aren't you dead?" The reason says, "Is uh, low ranker, low, low ranking marines like you guys can't kill me. I'd at least make you wait till Commodore to beat me." And Humbo then just says, "You idiot! I'll kill you." It's points again at Luffy, but he then says, "This is a sea stone bullet." Luffy knows station. We'll use Yusen to slash the gun in half. Saying, "Want to try again?" This is actually grabs the bullet, saying, "This will be useful in the future." This puts it in his pocket. Humbo then says, "Humbo then says, um, ah." He then yells, "Dad!" There's someone breaking out Zoro. No, no, Morgan. He's not coming to Humbo's rescue because it's his son. He's coming to the rescue because he can get a pretty high price for killing Pirate Hunter Zoro. Morgan jumps off the roof with Marines running down the stairs. Louis then says, Zoro, did you, did you, have, you, have, enough, you have enough energy now? As Zoro had finished eating the rice balls, and he's kind of collecting himself right now. Zoro then says, one swordsman to another. I pray you're not weak. As Zoro then draws his three swords, Louis then says, son through you. Three sword style. And, wait, hold up, excuse me again. Alright, so, I forgot the character's name, but I, just, I, I had to Google it. It's Shun Sui from Bleach. Because he uses a long sword and a short sword. Because he's ambidextrous, so I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make Luffy like that. He's more relaxed. Luffy draws, draws, draws Sino and, and Yusen as he then points them both at. So I was kind of confused with the sizes as Luffy, Luffy then says, "One arm, one arm is a little bit stronger than the other. As the stronger arm gets a longer blade." So I was like, "Let's see." Luffy also just in honor of Shunsui, I'm going to give him Flash Step and probably other other sword repair abilities. But not like, not that I don't, not like, uh, I'm not like Bonkai or Awakening Zanpakuto. No, no, like, nothing like that. But Luffy is going to just dump around the battlefield, slashing apart some enemies. And Humpo is kind of watching. And Kobe. Kobe's watching as well. This image of strong marines are, are being shattered right in front of him. And kind marines. Because you saw Morgan's, Morgan's just, just a, just an arrogant jerk. And he knows his, he didn't come to his son's rescue just because it's his son. He came to his, son, to his son's rescue to rescue his prize. That's really it. These other Marines are kind of just cowards because they don't want to want to stand up for what's right, even if they know it's wrong, because they're scared of Morgan. So, Kobe is kind of pissed. Humbo is just seeing like the image of his strong dad shattered as all those men are just rushing towards Morgan's side. Morgan's having like defending against Luffy's short sword, and. Luffy kind of like smacking away at Morgan's axe, and Humbo then just then just realizes his dad's not, not, not doing this for him. He's doing this to get his prize. And Humbo see this kind of just falls to his knees crying. And Luffy using short sword will slash Morgan's chest open as Morgan falls to the ground, passing out. While Zoro takes care of the rest of the Marines using an onigiri. Luffy puts Wakiz, puts his wakizashi and his regular sized blade away as he picks up uh, Morgan's axe. Like, like, he'll pick up by the blade as Morgan's, like, kind of pulls on the way. Luffy then says, It's Axe Hand Morgan. You didn't earn this axe by being strong. You earned it by being, by being, by being a weak link in the Marines. He pulls, he pulls as hard, not as hard as he can, but pulls decent, like, a hard, decent enough amount, and he pulls the axe right out of Morgan's arm. Morgan screams as his arm is from bleeding heavily now, but Luffy kind of, kind of just kicks Morgan unconscious. You know, he kind of puts his foot on Morgan's iron jaw, then steps, like, stomps on it. Morgan's iron jaw is broken. We throws the axe to Humapo, Humapo saying, You used to be better than your dad did. Or you used to be you used to be better than your dad ever was. He says Kobe. Kobe, and I guess I guess Humapo. What do you guys say? 
want to start out to sea with me? Humpo just saw his image of his strong father being beat, like just got beat right in front of him. And Humpo then says, if Marines are all coward, cowards and, and evil like that, then I don't want to, I don't want to see, see the Marines ever again. Humpo will grab Luffy's hand and agree to join him, join, join, his, join his voyage to, voyage to sea. And Kobe will agree as well as he, as he agrees with Humpo. Some Marines are actually too weak or too, like they're the too cowardice or they're, they're too corrupt. Louis Luffy then says, just know this, there will always be, be corruptness in the Marines. Marines, and even in pirates. Or in the revolutionaries. Every corner of the world, there will be someone corrupt. Don't forget that. As they walk to Luffy's, like, like dock, and Luffy looks around saying, hmm, this is a little too small for us. And then he sees Morgan, well, I'm going to say Humble actually just says, my father has a personal marine boat, if you want to take that. Louis then says, uh, if you were my son, I'd beat the hell out of you. As they run to Morgan's boat, and they see it's not painted painted blue, so they get on it. Now the, the like every all the villagers come out with food, a little bit of money, and some water. They put on on the ship as they set sail. The Marines actually all apologize to the villagers as they arrest Morgan. Um, but Humpo doesn't really need to be arrested right now. Lillian says Humpo is pretty weak for the axe, so he needs to have like he needs to have training in it. Zoro then she asks Luffy, "Do you you want to spar with me for a bit?" Luffy actually agrees to this. And they go through like, like some of the stuff in like the ship, and he sees like kendo swords. He's like, and eh, it's probably for some marines to train to train with. So we will put. I think actually chops one of the kendo blades in half to, so over to like like copy Wakazashi, and he grabs like a, like a regular sized one. As him and Zoro get ready to fight, Zoro will put we'll grab we'll grab three, and him and Luffy start start sparring. Luffy's one of Luffy's swords chopped in half, so it's not really as strong. But him and, him and Zoro are still, still doing pretty good right now. Zoro then sees Luffy overpowers him physically, but wait. He sees Luffy over, overpowers him physically, but Zoro over, overpowers him with speed. So Zoro's gonna use that against, against Luffy. But Luffy's using observation hockey. And he's dodging a lot of the a lot of the attacks. Zoro's gonna question this, like, you know, I thought it was faster. He sees Luffy's reflexes are actually on point. As Luffy actually gets in one good hit on Zoro's neck, sending him flying like right in the water. Luffy actually just laughs, saying, You tried. Zoro jumps back on the boat as he runs at Luffy, then she just ju she dumps Susan and yelling Onigiri. Luffy then says, huh, flash step. And Zoro then feels two like his large impacts, one on his chest, one on, one on his spine. Once he feels those, he just falls to the ground unconscious. Luffy then says, if I, wasn't, if I didn't have that technique, I probably would have been sent flying into the water. And be covered in bruises. As, as he puts the two kendo swords away, and he helps Zoro... Zoro up. If they have a small kitchen on the ship, I'd say, I'd say Kobe does have some decent cooking skills and navigation skills. So yeah, Kobe is helping Helmopo train. Kobe's using a kendo sword against like Helmopo's axe. See, I'm gonna say, say Helmopo and Luffy. Oh, Luffy's using making Helmopo and Kobe use kendo swords to train against each other. Like they, like they have to be living hell out of each other. So yeah. Now, fast forward to them getting to Buggy's Island. Now. We'll say like like they like, Louis still tried to jump and grab the bird, and his swords weren't with him right now. They're kind of like, like in his chambers. Like there's Captain Chambers and Louis in that room. Like but they all sleep under the ship. Kobe like one of them will sleep at night sailing the ship. But like Louis tries to jump and grab the swords since he brought not the swords. He tried to jump and grab, and grab the bird since he brought his swords, and he actually, he actually is, hang, is hanging on to it. And he says, "Oh no!" As the bird is flying faster and faster. This same thing still happens, but Luffy then just like pats around his body and finds like like a small kitchen knife. Luffy just using that to chop onions until he saw the bird, because he actually planned on like killing a bird with it with the knife. Luffy grabs the kitchen knife and stabs the bird in the chest, and the bird actually dies. Luffy starts falling with the bird as he actually is about to. He sees two people chasing a woman. Luffy throws one of the kitchen, not one of the kitchen. He throws the the cooking knife straight down on at like at one of the pirates, and Nami turns around just as a knife. Hits one of the guys in the head. Knife goes through the head, like not through, but like stabs the guy in the head. He also got him dead as Luffy will land on the other one. Luffy then says, uh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want to kill him, I should have hit him in the back or something. Puts a knife out and just, just kind of stabs the other one right in the spine so he can't move anymore. He pulls it out as he asks Nami if she's okay. He then looks, looks at the bird in Luffy's back and she says, Yeah, she's okay. And she's questioning what he's doing with a, with a dead bird. Luffy then says, 
Oh, me and my crew, we're, we're kind of trying to grab dinner. We're almost out of food. Feeling says, your crew, are you a pirate? Feeling says, yep. Feeling says, if you're a pirate, why'd you save me and not join them? Feeling says, not all pirates are dumb like these guys. It's, it's, well, all those are, all those are criminals, but not idiots. I'm a small bit of an idiot. Feeling says, not many people have the, have the, have the courage to admit that. She looks like a little confused. Feeling says, so, uh, why are they chasing you? Feeling says, I, I stole the Grand Line for them. Feeling says, did they have any, anything else valuable? Nami, Nami then says, um, they have some gold. Luthien says, want to help me finish robbing them? Luthien says, wait, actually, you're going to run in? Luthien says, eh, with a knife, with anything sharp, I'd be, I'd be pretty handy. Luthien says, so you're a swordsman. We just laugh, saying, exactly. Excuse me. Oh. I, th I thought someone pulled up. Um, Luthien and Nami then run towards, towards buggies. Curious, Nami has to go, like, this has a little bit of respect for Luffy. And she had saw him, like, just kill one guy. Like, she knows he won't try to kill anyone. He's, or she saw he wasn't a fan of killing. So Luffy, so Luffy and Nami are running towards the tower. Nami doesn't have, not the tower, but towards where Buggy is. Kind of like the tower that it, it was on in Cannon, but a really tall building. So as they're running towards Buggy, I mean, Nami doesn't really have the idea to tie up Buggy. She thinks Luffy's strong enough. And the mayor sees Luffy and Nami running towards Buggy. And he looks down the alley. There's two dead pirates. There's two, he, what he thinks is two dead pirates. One, one of them's only dead, though. Luffy is jumping from building to building. I guess he lands on the one buggy's on. And I say Luffy throws one like like the knife in one of the backs and the one that's close to the buggy ball. Well towards the cannon with the buggy ball in it. But he kinda looks lands right in front of the cannon and he looks in it. There's a can there's a cannonball in it. Buggy says, like, who the hell are you? Luffy then says, eh, the guy that's gonna drive you off this island, then rob you. He kicks the cannon up, and Nami then runs towards the ship. Luffy then yells, take as much as you can. Luffy he then just looks around as some guys run at him. Luffy just throwing the guys around like he's just throwing them. No station. One of them did try to like, tilt the cannon back towards Luffy. Luffy kicked it back down on the guy, knocking him out. One of the guys had a match as Luffy punched him out and then grabbed. She had to say a cigarette. He punched the guy out as he had the cigarette for his mouth and used the lip part to shut out like the cannon and blew on it until it just sparked. That was lit on fire. Luffy's defending everything. Like, he's defending like the lip part. There's Nami stealing from the ship. She sees, she sees Luffy's crew. We'll show what she, what she thinks it is. She yells from the ship, Are you guys Luffy's crew? Luffy told her her name. Told her told her his name. And Sterling yelled, Yeah, what, what about it? She then says, Luffy told me finish robbing the ship and then give you some of the gold. Or at least, not. Well, Luffy didn't tell her he give her give him a lot. She said, He just said, like, You know, enough to buy a little bit of food and water. So she's giving him, like, I'm going to say, until, like, like, five million berries on Buggy's ship. She's going to give them, like, like, like 10,000. So, she gives them that much. Toby and Helmpo accept this. So, yeah. Zoro then just says, wait, Luffy only had a kitchen knife with him. Zoro then looks to see where Luffy is as he picks up the Wakizashi and throws it towards Luffy. Zoro then yells, Luffy, catch. Luffy turned around to, to see Wakizashi flying at him. He kind of, like, turned around, got, pulled it out of the sea, out of the sheath, and stabbed one of the buggy's men. As a buggy wall, then just fired towards buggy. Buggy's kind of just watching his men be torn apart in shock. But he's able to grab two guys and hold them in front of him as Buggy Ball's fired at him. It blows up on impact, and Luffy was able to jump off the building in time. Luffy then jumps back up, seeing, like, thinking he should see two, like, a lot of dead people. And he sees, like, he sees a few, but Buggy's alive. And then he sees Buggy's arms are separated, like they were cut. They come back together. Luffy then says, Don't tell me you have a double fruit. And then Buggy then says, I do. The chop chop fruit. It makes me immune to blades. Luffy then says, Oh, damn it. He puts Wakazashi away. As then Kabaji and Moji then jump at Luffy. And Richie. Richie is like, is like Moji's pet. But as Moji and Richie jump at Luffy with Kabaji, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Humpo, Humpo and Kobe jump at Moji and Richie. Zoro will jump at Kabaji. Richie's punched in the face. You know, hit in the face of the kendo sword by Kobe. And Moji's kicked in the back by Humpo. By Humpo. Humpo is still holding the axe, but it's struggling a little bit. Luffy sees he's he can hold it up for a longer period of time, but it's a little bit. It's pretty hard. Moji will try to run at Humpo again, but Humpo just says this will be pretty relieving. He kind of drops the axe in like a slashing motion, and then it slashes Moji's chest. Moji passes out just from that sheer force. We go to Richie, Kobe. Like Richie will try to run at Kobe, but Kobe will use his his speed and just like smack Moji in the face with not Moji Richie in the face with a kendo sword. We'll go to Zoro versus Kabaji. 
Zoro's a little bit stronger and faster. So he's able to actually overpower Kabuji. He's able to get good slashing on, on his, almost on his face, but on his chest mainly, and he's out. And Luffy's kind of just jumping at Buggy, punching in at him. Buggy's top drop abilities is able to like get him far away. But then Luffy just says, hmm. He sees Buggy's feet aren't going with him. Luffy then has an idea. He slams on Buggy's feet, and he's holding the, kind of like, just, he slams, tries to slam, has, like, tries to slam his blade down on him. And, I'm saying, like, Buggy not being fast enough, is able, if he's able to get a good, like, like, slash in, but not like a stab, a slash, but only, like, tip of the blade. Buggy feels his tiny slash, and he says, what the hell? You know, as he kind of, like, stung a bit, that was enough for Luffy, then to say, you're off guard, as he punches Buggy in the gut, knocking him out. And, the, the mayor and the villagers were just watching this, as Luffy knocked out Buggy. Luffy picks up Buggy's torso and just throws it as far as he can, and went flying through his ship. Buggy's in the water as his crewmen that are like oh, are conscious and run towards the water trying to get trying to grab Buggy. Ones that just I saw where the rest of his body went, they just kind of grabbed that. So yeah, Buggy's head and his chest are sinking, along with his, like, like his upper arm. But yeah, Luffy gets a few thousand berries from Nami, and she actually agrees to set sail with them. They have enough room. So Luffy's in the captain's room. Nami, Nami try to like, get Luffy to give her that room. Even by trying to seduct him, but Luffy then says, uh, no, no thanks, my room. And he just kind of slams the door in her face. Then she sees where Kobe and um, Humapo are training, and this is a pretty big room where everyone's sleeping. Except, except for Luffy. Zoro kind of just sleeps wherever he, th wherever he sees fit. And to actually, be, to actually prove his loyalty, he sleeps in front of Luffy's door. But, as he says on stage, he sometimes stays up training, so does Luffy, but it makes it appear like he's sleeping. So yeah. Now, Humble and Kobe. Humble just actually just uses use like two kendo swords as like a hand like he'll put his hands around two kendo sword handles to like use to holding something as large as the axe handle. And fight Kobe with those two um things. With the two kendo sword handles. And they train all throughout the night. Up until they get to Surf Village. They still meet Gaimon and everything. Just Kobe and Humble Humble over there. They get to Surf Village. They get out, and honestly, Kobe was decent enough to like make a flag with the like. He didn't make a full like like Jolly Roger, but he's able to put like a straw hat on the flag or on the sail, and and he's able to paint it black. But and at the straw, hat, that's really it. Then we go to Usopp's point of view. Usopp's watching the ship arrive, and he sees two people, two like three people training on the ship. One really buff guy with three swords, and then two people. Like one of them's holding two swords in one hand, or well, holding two swords. As like, like one thing, and there's another one just punching at him. So yeah, so that's what he sees. Kobe, Zoro, and Luffy. Not Luffy. Kobe, Zoro, and, H and Humapo. Luffy's training like under, under the ship. So yeah, once they get far, once they get close enough to shore, they see like you know they might they might push against the sand. Luffy just jumps off the ship. Like he jumps up to see where they are in the water. He jumps off and just and swims like he pushes the ship to shore and onto the shore. So. They go aboard. Usopp still tries to think, tries to like fool them, but Luffy then says, hmm. and he'll use observation hockey to point out how many heat, heat signatures he finds. That's what he uses for observation hockey, is heat signatures. He says, I only, only see three of you. Or four of you. So I'm pretty sure there's, there are three kids and one Usopp. So yeah, he says, there's, only, there's only four of you. And Usopp then says, How ridiculous of you. So Luffy just slashes the air with the, with, with, with Yusen, and every, each and every sign is sliced apart. And he then, he then sees Usopp jump up in fear and the three kids. Usopp then says, fine, you caught us. You don't need to kill us. Luffy then says, killing isn't my thing. I only do it if necessary. Usopp says, all right, so you don't see us as necessary to kill? Luffy then says, God, no. You can't be much more than my age, and those those, those three are kids. As Luffy jumps up the mountain with Nami on his back, and Kobe and, and, Helmopo, and Helmopo jump up on their own, Zoro just jumps up to Luffy's level. Nami gets off Luffy's back as Luffy, Luffy will talk to Usopp for a bit and they go into the town. Cloud over things still happen, but until Luffy is about to drop off a cliff, like everything goes the same. Until Luffy's about to fall off the cliff with Usopp and him spying on Cloud Over. Once falls off, he's able to actually just easily use his arm to hold him to hold him up, and as Cloud over to look up, Luffy's gone. Luffy had to just flip himself in the air as high as possible, and he ended up going over a tree. I saw this and was like questioning Luffy's strength since he was using like three fingers, like not three, but like four or five, not four, three or four fingers to hold himself up. So, yeah. 
Now, once Luffy, like, once, like, once they clawed over, tried to, like, he shaved to see who's up there. It was up to about the caught until Luffy took takes such place. And it makes it, look, makes it look like he's napping. And Carter is like, is he actually asleep? And Luffy's just laziness. He's able to fall asleep a lot faster. He has like a zero kind of like personality. Like, like smarter is zero. That's what Luffy is. And hey, Luffy actually fell asleep pretty fast. So he, he like, Carter will poke Luffy a bit. And he actually can, can confirm Luffy's asleep. He's up kind of just hiding. So Kuro just leaves. So he goes he goes to his um to well to his job. And Jungle goes back to the ship. Once once Usopp thinks he's clear, he wakes up Luffy and he confirms, you know, they were they're gonna probably kill everyone. Now when you go to when you go, go to the attack, Zoro's just following Luffy, like just straight up following Luffy. Kobe and Humpo are training a bit, and Humpo still has the axe on his back. And he's using the axe on his back for, like like train like carrying heavier weight. Kobe is rushing at, at like the guys, which is, not the guys, but at one of the pirates with, with like just like a like a t-shirt on, I think just a long shirt and some some sweatpants and some boots. So yeah, like that's like Kobe, Humpo's Humpo's attire is like he has a purple suit still, but he's a lot taller, so he has that. He has a purple suit, just kind of opened, and he has a black shirt under that with jeans and fancy shoes. At least dress shoes. Dress shoes. Kobe wears a long, a long black, sh long white shirt, some sweatpants and boots. Luffy wears a red shirt, some some wristbands like you see in that. He has a straw hat, just kind of hangs off on his back. He has a wakizashi, he and the long sword, just kind of like that. So, yeah, the sword just wears what he does in canon, so does Nami. So yeah, but they're running the pirate crew. Like Black Cat Pirates, as the Meowvin brothers see there's more people, so they think they, think they should interfere. So they, they jump towards Luffy and Zoro as they look like the strongest, but that's when Luffy then yells. He yells Dragon Twister. Zoro had come up with this move using the um, Kendo Swords, and Luffy's gonna copy it. Luffy has muscle memory. I'll give him that. Like, he, like once he sees a move, he can copy it. And using his muscle memory, he then yells Dragon Twister. Zoro's wasn't, wasn't perfected, but Luffy's is almost perf perfected off of that. So we'll hit that as one of the Mabin brothers is sent flying with a giant, like, slashing chest that almost looks like it killed him. The other one is, was, like, unscathed. He's able to jump away. Zoro then yells Onigiri, and the slash appears in his chest. Not in Zoro's chest, but in the other Mabin brother. John goes and sees who the similar two, some of the strongest fighters were just beaten like that. Zoro then says, So you stole my move? Luffy then says, Yours wasn't perfect. Mine, mine is. He doesn't know it's not perfect. And then you see Luffy kick Jongo, not, not Luffy, Kobe kick Jongo in the face as Humbo uses his axe and will slash apart a lot of the other pirates. Then Nami's using using her staff. And then we go to Kuro. You saw the Mabin brothers taken down with one with like two moves. Then Kuro will try to use his like shave technique on, on like Luffy, but Kobe will use his speed and kick Kuro in the chest, saying, Luffy, let me fight him. And Luffy then says, Why? Kobe then says, This technique is suspicious. Looks like a, looks like a marine technique. Luffy then says, "What do you? How do you know it?" Luffy then says, "Kobe then says it's in a few books. Wasn't it? It's like a book or two that Haogita had." Luffy then says, "I see." As as Kobe starts fighting Kuro, and Kuro's using shave and slashing like Kobe's arms and stuff. Luffy's just watching. If a slash gets too fatal, he actually jump in and, and block it. But he gets away after that. After that, after like him blocking the attack. And as like Kuro's about to get like a good slash on Kobe's neck, excuse me, Kobe then just says, <laughs> Kobe then yells, "I got you." As he as he then yells, "Shave!" and he's behind Kuro and kicks Kuro square in the face, knocking him out cold. So Kuro's knocked out cold, and the rest of the crew is is either knocked out, like like one or two people are dead because of because of but not not controlling his own strength for the axe. <laughs> We the Luffy says, and I'll be taking this. He takes off Kuro's glove and he takes Jongo's like, like hypnosis ring. He puts the he puts the ring around his neck, saying, "This will, this will come in useful at some point." But not for hypnosis. And he actually puts Kuro's claw on the ship, and yeah, so they get rewarded by the villagers. 
hey, what's up we'll join the crew what's up just like did like miscellaneous things like find firebird stars or lead ball stars or alcohol stars tabasco stars that's that kind of stuff and he got on the ships and he kind of recognized it saying this is like a marine ship aren't you guys are you guys marines or are you guys pirates Lithian says we stole it from from a marine something says i see and actually i'm saying like they, they stuck the mary but this like this actually make this ship like the mary tows the smaller ship as what they have it do since there's a lot of you know they put the training gear in one room of the mary and that's like the training room how about when kobe need that room more than how about zoro how about kobe and zoro need that room zoro just wants to use it because he prefers training a lot Libby is actually wants to learn navigation skills from Nami, as he knows they could be separated at some point. It happens in life. So Nami admires this trait about Luffy. Like he's always learning. He's always, he's always wants to learn. Because Luffy knows he's not smart, but he wants to at least learn some things that would be useful to him as a pirate. Like Luffy and Cannon, he knows he doesn't need to learn a lot of stuff his crew does because he has faith that they'll be with they'll, they'll be together forever. But Luffy, he, he's prepared to like be be separated from his crew. So. He'll train, not train, but like, he wants to learn basic navigation skills, basic cooking skills. He wants to learn all that. For cooking, he can only do like, like, like cooking, like cooking small animals on a stick. He can do that kind of stuff. That's really it. But we're going to go to the Bratier, Bratier arc. Luffy had actually led them there. I just thought that'd be a pretty good stop. So we get there. And while they are there, they're basically full body. And full body does try to start a fight. But that's when Luffy actually blocks Full body's punch and Sanji's kick with he blocks Sanji's kick with his own leg and blocks full body's punch with his, with his hand. And says, "This is a cooking establishment, not not a fighting arena." Now you is when he's like he'll put full body's hand down and points at Sanji, saying, "Saying don't let any customers like this get in, ruin your mood. You just keep hitting on women and serving good food." He smiles at Sanji. Sanji then says, "Finally, someone admires, admires my technique." As he actually sm smirks at Luffy and walks off. Then point at full, Luffy point at full body saying, and you get the hell out if you're just interrupt everyone. Full body says, I'm an official. Luffy says, says, yeah, and I'm a swordsman. As he kicks, as he kicks um, full body out of the door, and full body kind of fumbles on the dock and just goes like, go back to his ship. Luffy sits back down. As long as you don't know, he just laughs saying, are all Marines that, fu that full of himself? As Kobe then says, they might be. Luffy says, I can confirm not all of them are. My grandpa's a nice guy. And I trust his crew is also a nice guy. Or his marine crews is also full of nice men and women. Gain still stumbles in, and Sanji still feeds him. Luffy saw Sanji join his crew. So Luffy is off on like a good start with Sanji. So Sanji then says, You seem like a good person, but not really my thing. Luffy then says, You've been ogling at Nami a lot. You can ogle more if you, if you join us. Sanji then says, Tempting, but no. Luffy then says, Part of my crew has their own dreams. What's yours? Sanji then says, The All Blue. You heard of it? Luffy then says, Huh. I might, have, I, might have, I might have read about it at some point, but no, not really. That's when Luffy will say. Not Luffy, that's when Sanji will say. The All Blue is something that's that's where all oceans connect. That's where all oceans connect. And you can find every fish in the world from every blue, from the Grand Line, from the New World. Luffy then says, Sounds like paradise. Sanji Sanji then says, exactly. Now what's your dream? Luffy then says, eh, being a pirate, or to at least use, m make my own make my own sword style. Or make an undefeated sword style, or a unteachable one. And uh, if I and I'm, I'm, I'd be the only person to be able, be able to teach it. Like I don't want I don't want it to be passed down to my bloodline. That's it. Like I I create it, I pass it down. And Sanji then says, Sounds creative. So, King the Pirates or Master Swordsman? He then says, I don't need to be the best swordsman. Or I just need, need to be an admirable one. And Zoro is hearing this. He says, So, he doesn't want to be the best or number one. He just wants to be be an admirable one. And Zoro, can, Zoro can respect this. His new goal, his goal has changed. Make sure Luffy becomes a respectable swordsman. Luffy is respectable right now, but. He wants, to, he wants to help Luffy reach his goal to the max. So yeah. 
Zoso has the same goals, and well, he has two goals now. Help Luffy and make his own goal happen. So, yeah. Now, we go to the Don Creed Pirates arriving. When they arrive, Luffy then looks at, like, the crew as Pearl will step off, Don Krieg, and let's work through the fight. Luffy's been just, like, watching Helmabo and Kobe fight most of the time with Usopp joining them as well, and Johnny and Yasu. Excuse me. Alright, so. Oh, um. Yeah, all of Don Krieg's crew arrives, and Luffy will see Helmabo, Kobe, U Usopp, and Nami fighting mainly. He made Zoro not not be able to fight because he wants Zoro to like just watch instead of joining all like, joining in all the time. Because he says, you know, all these are all these are just miscellaneous. We don't need to do anything. Johnny and Yasu do join in as well. And that's when Luffy then sees he's Gein pinned down Zef and hold a gun to his head. So now now Gein that's when Gein then says, nobody move or I'll kill him. He looks at Gein saying. And are you prepared to fire? Gein then says, What do you mean? Of course I am. I'm holding a gun to his head. Luffy then says, You're sweating and you're and your hand you're shaking. You're not prepared. Though those things are meant are meant for action, not hesitation. As it's Gein kind of just shakes a little more. And Luffy then says, Gein, admit you're nervous. Or I'll cut your hand off. Gein Gein picks up the gun and throws it, saying, saying, I don't want to hurt him. Gein says, good, go inside and wait. Gein runs inside, as Luffy will look at, look at Pearl as Pearl's yelling, Gein, you coward. Sanji then just says, drop your guard. Sanji will jump in the air and kick Pearl in the head as hard as he can. Pearl's head will kind of like spray blood as, nose come, as blood comes from his nose and his mouth. Pearl falls unconscious. We will land. Oh, Luffy Sanji will land on the ground, saying thanks. As Ethan says, and says, "Boy, you seem you seem to know to, to know a lot, or at least know how to get into his head." I taught you this. Luffy says, "This I saw someone do that before." And again, not again. That's what Ethan says. Well, it worked. Sanji, before these men leave, join their crew. Well, before these men and before these men and that woman leave, join their crew. Sanji's like, damn it, you know, even he wants me to go. Sanji, not Sanji. Luffy then just sees Don Krieg being, being ready to like, shoot his poison. He then says, you'll all die if, if my crew's going to be defeated. This one Luffy then says, Zoro, you can do it now. Zoro then jumps in the air. He just kind of runs down as fast as he can. And he then just yells, yells, Dragon Twister. Luffy goes two swords style, Dragon Twister. And he'll slash... And there's John Creek's armor, and is not had enough force to send Don Creek flying. John Creek was in the water as the poison then shot out. John Creek is unaffected by it, and a few fish. John Creek then dies in the water, and everyone's kind of like, just, like kind of shocked that Luffy let that happen. Luffy, Luffy picks up Gein's tonfa, and he goes inside and hands him to Gein. He then says, Sanji's joining us, so you're going to stay here and take his place. Gein says, what, what, about, what about them? Luffy then says, uh, well, how about we ask the cooks? The, cook, the cooks give different answers, like kill them, or or let them let them rot in the sea, or just, just send them out in a boat. Luffy then says, the boat idea seems fun. And he looks at the small boat the Moe, not the Moe, the Mary is towing. Nami did not leave it for the crew, it's a little bit nicer to her. Not a little bit nicer, but she they, she has a little more bond with him. And with Luffy mainly, because he he's, he's like her student right now. Luffy unties Ties that ship and takes everything of value off of it, even the kitchen. Like he, he will dismantle the whole kitchen and put it on, on like the like the like the docking area of the of the Bratier. He ties up all the Dunkery pirate members on that that he can they can fit, and he kicks the boat off. The boat just just drifts. That's when that's when Kobe or actually, I'm gonna say that's when Humble Humble then says, "I put a hole in it so so it sinks when they get far enough." We will smack Humble in the head saying. You idiot. Humbo will laugh as Sanji will leave will leave Bratier joining this riot crew. Sanji then sees the sees, then sees their kitchen. He's like, this is pretty in pretty good good condition. Kobe is actually just like kind of sweeping like not like sweeping, but like kind of dusting off the ceiling. Sanji then says, the other one keeping keeping the ship nice and clean. Kobe then says, Yeah, kind of habit. Kind of like making a fake smile as he doesn't like admitting he had, he had developed a habit of cleaning every ship every ship that he's on from Alvida. 
Come up and says, Kobe, stop cleaning and train with me now. As someone picked up the axe, and Kobe then says, Oh god, this is gonna be hard. As he actually just picks up a sword, like he actually he actually asks Zoro to use one of his swords. Zoro will say no, but Johnny and Yasu will hand over one of their swords to Kobe so Kobe can train with Helmuppo. Luffy's making them more like training gear so they don't get a deep cut. So yeah. Nami then tells him about, about like her past as they're sailing. Which shows Luffy. Luffy has a new course at Vlog Town, it's Kokugashi Village. As they're going there, I don't say how slow they were going there. They encountered Nezu, Nezu, Nezumi. Nezumi is kind of questioning, you know, who are they? And Louis then says, oh, you. Nezumi then just kind of, he doesn't like, he doesn't know Nezumi, but he doesn't like, well, not oh, you. It's like, oh, a marine. Is Louis then just said, like, he then sees where, where Nezumi's coming from. It says, all right, take, take, your, take your cup marine as well. Nezumi then says, Crep Marine, no, I'm a businessman. Nami then says, Nami then says, no, you're Crep Marine. As, as Nezumi then says, oh, you're Nami, the navigation or the navigator for the Don Creek Pirates. Nezumi then says, and says, once, are, once, we have, once we have Arlong's head, I'm going I'm going to make her get that get that tattoo taken off. And then she, she can get whatever she pleases on that arm. Nezumi then says, that chance, as Nezumi pulls out a gun, tries to shoot Luffy. Luffy will dodge the bullet as he then yells, Sanji. Sanji, this is your chance. Sanji will jump off the ship and kick Nezumi in the face so hard that Nezumi is sent flying off of the boat and into the water. And he's unconscious, so he kind of just sinks. We jump onto the boat as well. He starts slashing apart some of the Marines. And not like to the, not the point that they're dead, but like they're un unconscious. Zoro isn't joining in. Luffy didn't give him permission to. So Luffy and Sanji finish beating up the crew. As they get back, they go back on the boat, on the Mary, and they finish going to the island. Now... I'm going to to um no to Nojiko. She was watching and she like Nezumi's ship leave until she saw Luffy's ship beat everyone up on it. Now Luffy then says, "Want to stop the village or or we're going to go straight straight for Arlong?" I mean, Nami then says, "Was I'm not surprised the village by beating Arlong first. So we dock at Arlong Park and Nojiko. She, they didn't know Nojiko saw them. This is Nojiko then says the Marines that Arlong meets with were just beaten up." They like by who? They're pretty strong marines. Listen, this one like Gina said that. That's when no children says, Nami found found a new crew, and she brought them here. Now they all run towards Along Park as Luffy's ship will dock in the middle of it as Luffy jumps off. Along Along says, "Who are you, Brett?" Luffy says, "Oh, I'm Nami's captain. Now who the hell are you?" Oh yeah, she told me, "You're you're you're like her head jailer." Along says, more like her captain. Luffy says, nope, that's my title. Along stands up towards and walks towards Luffy. As Along towers over Luffy by like two, three feet. I'm pretty sure Along's like eight feet tall and Luffy's like, like five. The Luffy's intense training. I want to say he gets a little bit taller. So Luffy's like five, like five nine. It's around Zoro's height. Along tries to punch Luffy as Luffy actually. Punches Arlong's fist. Arlong feels like the bones in his, in his fist and arm start breaking. You know, he feels like he feels them crack. He's like, mm, "Brat, you're pretty strong." Luffy says, eh, "That's not even half of the strength I was using. That's like that's a lazy punch for me." And you guys recognize this move. Luffy like punch Arlong in the air as he jumps up towards Arlong level and he yells triple kick. Now Luffy's behind Arlong for the final kick and two like large like leg imprints will go to Arlong's chest, his gut, and one on his back. Arlong falls to the ground unconscious. As there's a loud boom, like there are like, like three booms. Once the kicks, like once Luffy goes behind Arlong, three booms were heard. Arlong falls to the ground unconscious. We will land on top of Arlong Park as the rest of, the, the rest of Arlong's crew will start running at Luffy. Zoro will fight, will fight Hachi still. And there's a running where I skipped over Mihawk. I said, I said I'm saying that like Mihawk didn't actually come to the island. So, because I just skipped over it, actually. Hmm. I'll cover it in the next. I'll make like a make a, like a point five of this of like the fight versus Mihawk. Sorry, I skipped over it. It's just this video is already long as is, and I forget some stuff. So I'll go over the Mihawk versus Zoro versus Zoro fight. So the next part actually. Or point five, but um, back to this, back to this. What if Luffy you see Zoro fighting Hachi? Actually, actually, just to get Mihawk out of the way, it goes the same. It goes the same. Absolutely the same. Zoro still fights Hachi, but he's a little bit stronger, so so he's able to overpower Hachi still. He doesn't kill him. Johnny and Yasu are fighting some miscellaneous fishmen. 
Sanji fights the same guy that can. Sanji's a little bit stronger, so he's able to beat him. But Kobe joined in the fight as well, so that guy was, was like manhandled. Lily wasn't put underwater, so Kobe wouldn't come there, but he wouldn't, and he didn't cannon. But, um, yeah. The Ong pirates are beaten. He still had to fight the, fight the same guys in person, but Helmet was helping him. Kobe was, Kobe was helping Sanji. I mean, fought, fought some miscellaneous fishmen. Yeah. So, right as, like, the villagers arrive, they arrive as, as like, every fishman is beaten. And they, they thought, you know, they should, they could, like, Luffy's crew needs some help. But they arrive, and they see Luffy holding his blade at Arlong's neck. Arlong then actually just says, If you let me go, I'll, I'll leave the East Blue. Luffy then says, I don't believe you. As he raises his blade up and about to, like, slash Arlong's neck. So then Nami then says, says, Hold on, answer me, answer me this first. Once I collected the hundred million berries, were you planning to let my, vill to my, to let my village go? Arlong says, Hell no. I was just, I was gonna, I was gonna rob you and kill you. Now that angered Luffy, Nami can even stop this. Luffy chopped off Arlong's head. Luffy, Luffy then says, Scum like you shouldn't even be able to take to take place in the, in the new world. I just kicked Arlong's body and head into the water. Luffy, Luffy then says, Nami, go grab your hundred million berries and put some of it in the village, then put the rest of it on the ship. Nami runs and puts hundred million berries, some of it in the village, like she has like thirty million in the village, and the rest of it goes on the, on the Mary. Nami gets her tattoo removed, Zoro, Zoro gets treated. And they set sail again after partying, partying for like three days. Hamabo is still growing his hair out like a mullet. And Hakobi and him are still training. Now they get to Logtown. When they get there, they're like, they, like at least, at least also fight Smoker, but his observation is a little bit better. Here than like when he started in the Grand Line. Not in the Grand Line, but when he started, like, no, I'm, I'm dumb. Luffy gets to fight Smoker. He has improved observation hockey, and it's a little, it's a little bit better than when he, left, when he left when he left Fisher Village. He was able to dodge a lot of the hits, and Smoker and him are like like evenly matched, like almost evenly matched. Luffy is has like this has like the strength advantage. He's physically stronger than Smoker. And Luffy's speed improving as well. He's able to get like he's able to get near Smoker and catch him off guard. He kicks Smoker, your shoot away. And Luffy will take this and start running through like all of the village. Well, all of Logtown. And right as he starts running away, he tells his crew, scatter. They'll run. And Smoker has his has his weapon taken away. It's Ashigi, still still encounters Zoro. But Luffy, he's able to get far enough from Smoker to actually hide his jute in the in the same bar. Now Luffy actually like Luffy kinda of just puts his jute like around right behind the counter as he sits down in the bar. And he still talks to the same barkeep as in canon. Barkeep still sees Roger and Luffy, but just a little bit, like, a little bit different. Like, what if, if Goldie Roger was a swordsman? Luffy, Luffy would be the embodiment of him. But Roger used like guns and cutlasses and stuff. So, yeah, we're gonna go to Luffy on the podium. Luffy's kind of chilling there, but that's when Buggy tries to push him down to put a, like lock his head in place. Luffy's able to like, like dodge this attack as he slams Buggy into it. And then she then says, "Hmm." He slams like the like the cutlass in like the post, but barely missing the like like Buggy's head isn't cut off, but it's like almost like the, like the tip of the blade is poking Buggy's neck. He jumps off the podium as he then says, says, "Enjoy the light show, everyone." As lightning bolt slams into the blade, Buggy screaming in pain is being electrocuted as Alvita is watching how ruthless Luffy is. He just cut off guard as Kobe then kicks her in the face and you're flying. Luffy says Alvita is like, eh, "Some girls flying towards me." Sorry, no fans. As he punches her straight straight towards Kobe again. Or not punch, but, but like just like, like shoves her towards Kobe again. Kobe's like, like, uh, Luffy, you're weird. As he makes Alvita, like, he just dodges Alvita. That's right to get all their money. Who's not supposed to fight Daddy, Daddy Masterson, but he actually wins this one, and in a different way. Like, like when it comes to, like quick draw, who's up is a given. Like he's, he'll take a gun, and he fires it. Like Daddy, fire faster than Daddy Master, faster than him. And Daddy Masterson's guns are shot away. So, yeah, tries to get things done. Sanji wins, wins the cooking, cooking competition. Zoro gets 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 contested to third, and Yubashiri, and he leaves, he leaves with the strats. So yeah, now we're gonna do this part. Like, subscribe, comment, click, comment if you did. Bye now.